Hello, you're watching a lesson on vCloud upgrade dependencies. Now, rather than what I've typically done in this course and show you kind of the specifics of what we'll be working on in the environment, I've skipped that in this lesson because with an upgrade, we're pretty much going to touch everything. And it's really not about resource clusters and management clusters. It's more about getting the code in the entire environment upgraded to the level that you're trying to go to. This is typically because there's some feature that you want or you're trying to stay within maintenance uh, in that you're trying to stay on a supported build or supported version of vCloud and its requirements. But whatever the case may be, there's definitely a, a lot of wrong ways and a few right ways in order to perform an upgrade. So to begin, I cover some general upgrade tips that really could be used in any kind of scenario, but I think it's worth calling out just because sometimes you're excited about getting an upgrade done or, you know, there's a deadline looming on you and there's a, there's a tendency to want to maybe cut corners or maybe, you know, do it the fast way and say, well, you know, nothing's going to happen. You know, it's just an upgrade, no big deal, right? And you just kind of fire off the upgrade and then it explodes in your face. <laughs> so there's, there's definitely some, uh, some tips that you should go through to avoid uh, having to fill out your resume. Uh, so the first, it, at least in a vCloud environment, is go ahead and lock it down. And by that I mean go ahead and submit your request for change, your change control, sometimes it's called an RFC, uh, so that people know that you're looking to make this change. And that's going to give you a maintenance window typically, a set of hours that it's going to take to complete the upgrade. And it's going to enable you to authoritatively disable user access uh, because, because there is a maintenance window, because people understand and have approved your change, you can typically make, you know, kind of call the shots to the change. And part of that is you need to kick people out. So the, they're not in there provisioning virtual machines and vApps and, you know, generally going all higgledy-piggledy <laughs> in, in the environment, uh, which uh, frankly just isn't going to work if, if people are doing that. It's not, a, it's not a supported configuration for the upgrade. So do yourself a favor, submit the change request. And I put a red flag on it because it's recommended to take backups. I would say, in my opinion, it's a requirement to take backups. Backup everything. Back up all the databases, back up the virtual machines, back up all the components you can. Try to make it as, as easy to restore from an oops as possible because, frankly, if you haven't hit an upgrade snag in a product prior, I'm not saying just vCloud, but anything, then you're a very lucky person and your luck's going to run out at some point. And for pretty much, well, I'd say almost everything within VMware and really most people's products, there's not necessarily a rollback. Uh, such as upgrading vCenter, for example, the authoritative rollback press process literally is restore the backup. Uh, so there's, there's no easy way to get back to the old version. This holds especially true for any databases. Typically, when you upgrade a database and you've committed those transactions, they're done. Uh, the only way to get back to the pre prior state is to restore backup. So definitely take backups of everything, and I'll, I'll go over that, but you know, don't make the mistake of assuming that it'll work fine the first time. There's always a chance that you'll hit uh, less of a chance of a bug, but more of a chance of just, you know, you, you hit bad luck. You know, you have a, uh, there was a corrupted table because the disk isn't good on your SQL server or something like that, and, and you don't find out about that until you go to the upgrade. Uh, who knows what it is? The final piece is I'll go over the hierarchy that we're going to do. And this is what's called a top-down upgrade process in that we're starting with the logical top of the stack uh, with vCloud Director, the cells themselves, and working down towards the physical hosts, uh, which is opposite of a, a bottom-up would be starting with the physical infrastructure and working our way up towards management. Uh, so the five things that we're going to upgrade are the vCloud Director cells or the servers. In this case, we only have one for this course. Uh, and then the vCloud Director database, regardless of the number of cells, you're only going to have one database. The third item are the vShield managers. You may have one or more. Pretty much every time you have a vCenter, you're going to have a vShield manager. Uh, and then vCenter itself. Again, in this environment, we only have one vCenter, one vShield manager, uh, and one vCloud Director cell. So it's a pretty simple kind of flavor of vCloud Director. Typically, you'll have multiples of all these things, or at least multiple cells, but the process really doesn't change. You're going to upgrade the vShield Manager, the vCenter, and then the hosts uh, after you've upgraded all the vCloud components. Okay, so the first thing I recommend doing, now that you have the tips in mind, is checking the upgrade path, because 
just because you want to go to a particular version of VMware vCloud doesn't necessarily mean you can with one upgrade. Uh, so I advise pretty much always checking the compatibility matrix. And in this case, we're looking at the solutions upgrade path uh, from a particular version to another version. Now I have a photo of it here as well as a link that you can use. Uh, so the IT train uh, slash interop matrix is a, a shortened URL that you can use to get right to VMware's um, solution upgrade path for the compatibility matrix. But I'll also show you how to get there as well uh, in just a moment. Uh, so you can see in this case, I'm asking for the upgrade path that's possible for uh, under select a product, I've chosen VMware vCloud Director. So if I were on version 5.1, uh, I could go to version 5.1.1. The rows are where you're at and the columns are where you want to get to. So if on the left side, I'm at VMware vCloud, uh, we'll say 1.5.1, I can do an upgrade on the right column to 5.1.1. There's a green check mark uh, indicating that it's okay to move to that version. Now if I were on uh, if you'll look at 1.5 and I wanted to go to 1.5.2, there's no check mark in that column, so I can't actually do that. That's not a supported upgrade. Additionally, you'll want to check the solution interoperability, that's a fun word, uh, matrix, to make sure that not only the version you're moving to will be supported from an upgrade perspective, but then also the components that are kind of bundled in with vCloud are also supported. So in this case, uh, all I've really done is I've selected the radio button for solution interoperability, and I've chosen vCloud Director 5.1.1 uh, in Section 1. And then in Section 2, I've selected vCloud Networking Security, which is still kind of labeled vShield, uh, and asked it what versions are compatible with that. And you'll see that there's actually three versions that are compatible with that. Uh, version 5.1.2, 5.1.1, and 5.1 are all compatible. I also added vShield Edge just to show you you can add other products. So rather than just showing you photos of this, let me swap on over to Internet Explorer and I'll show you how to get here and how to manipulate the compatibility matrix tool. Okay, so I've got the website for VMware.com up and I'm not going to use the shortened URL just to show you how to get to it in case you don't have the shortened URL handy. Uh, you basically go to, there's a support and download section here and compatibility guides is listed underneath these top support resources. So you click on that and then it's not as obvious, it's right here, product interoperability matrices, so our matrices. Uh, you click on that, it opens a new tab and here you go. So interoperability, upgrade paths, and database interoperability are all right here with radio buttons. So the first thing I did was I went to solution upgrade path and I chose a product. There's not that many choices here so it's pretty easy to find what you need. Cloud Director, and there we go. So if I were on 5.1 right here, I would just cross on over and I could see I could upgrade to 5.1.1. It's got a green check mark telling me that that's a compatible upgrade. If I hover over it, it tells me it's compatible. Um, so you can you can kind of tell where you're at and where you're going pretty straightforward. Uh, and so you just read left and then go to the right. Obviously, uh, 5.1.1, there's nothing in these boxes because that would be downgrading to an older version. Uh, and including here, that would be upgrading to the same version. Uh, so the, there's always going to be a diagonal gray area of boxes because you can't upgrade to the same version. And you obviously can't upgrade to a, a previous version. That would be a downgrade. And then the other part that I did was the solution interoperability uh, button here. And it's basically what do you have and what are you looking to see uh, interoperability for. So I could say that I have, uh, and there's a ton of stuff in here. So let's say that we've got, let's find vCloud on here. It's under cloud, vCloud director. And we've got 5.1.1. Right now it's blank. Now we need to select what we want to compare it against. So we could go and check, uh, let's see here. There's just so much stuff in this list. Um, there we go, security products, vCloud networking security. We could add that and see what that's compatible to. We could also uh, grab vShield manager here and add that. So notice that uh, technically that's not compatible anymore because the name has changed to the vCloud networking security. So it's interesting uh, the, the naming around that. And there's going to be stuff that has no compatibility because it has no bearing on it. So if I collect if I clicked on something that's completely doesn't matter, like let's say vFabric Insight, uh, there's there's not even any checkboxes because there's no relationship between these two products. There's no interoperability at all. So in this case, it's not saying that I can't use these products necessarily 
uh, in the same environment. It's just saying that uh, there's really no there's really no relationship between these two products. So if you wanted to just get rid of all these empty rows, you can say, I just want to see what is compatible. Uh, so that would give you a clue as to what you're, what you're going to need to upgrade beyond just the vCloud solution. So I know that uh, I'm currently running uh, vCloud Network and Security 5.1.1. That's compatible. I don't need to upgrade that. Or perhaps uh, I want to go ahead and say, oh, okay, here's 5.1.2. I'll go ahead and upgrade. So these tools are very helpful. I won't go any further into that because it's, I, I think beyond that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the one thing I will call out is I don't feel like enough people know that these really exist. So uh, you can really kind of wow people because they'll say, hey, can we upgrade to this? And you'll pull this up and you can take a screenshot, show it to your boss or whatever. And they will think, wow, this guy really knows a lot about VMware and vCloud. And it's also a great way to kind of cover your rear end uh, in saying, you know, like in the example with the, the upgrade paths here, if I had been pulling up vCloud Director and someone said, oh yeah, we're going to go to, you know, version 152, you could say, oh, well, that's, uh, from 152 to 5.1, you could say, well, that's not supported. You know, we need to install Fresh on this. So it's a good way to uh, make sure that it's going to be a successful upgrade. Okay, so at this point, you've dotted all your I's and crossed your T's. Your change control is, you know, you're filling it out or you, you've submitted it, and you've looked at the interoperability matrices to figure out exactly, you know, is this a supported upgrade or not. So you've done your homework, basically. Now it basically comes down to upgrading the vCloud components. Now, like I said, it's a top-down upgrade process. So the first thing we'll cover is upgrading the director cells or the servers. Uh, so the first thing, and you think this is, you know, you may think this is kind of obvious, but <laughs> it, it tends to be something that gets forgotten. Make sure you have all your passwords. I can't tell you how many times we've gone to do an upgrade or I've worked with someone doing an upgrade, and the SQL account, you know, DBA password is missing. And you've got to literally do, you know, you're in your maintenance window and you're literally paging the on-call DBA trying to find this password and, and trying, you know, password with an uppercase and a lowercase and all these funny things. So have your password, test it, make sure it works, you know, make sure that you can validate that the SQL account works, that your root account works uh, for vCloud Director. Have them all kind of written down. I know that goes against normal rules. You just have them written down for the upgrade. Then you can light the paper on fire or delete the file, whatever it is. But uh, make sure you have them handy. The other part, and I think I alluded to this a little earlier, is we have to quiesce the cell. And quiesce is just a fancy term for make it quiet, uh, make it sure it's not doing anything, get rid of all the activity. Uh, and in this case, we want to make sure that nobody is essentially making a change. They're not powering on something, powering off, building, those kind of things. Uh, so that no user is basically executing tasks. Uh, and this also comes down to admins as well, because it's not just a user that could fire off a new task, it could be an admin. So I call it the too many cooks in a kitchen syndrome for an upgrade where you have seven admins and you know this, the sixth and seventh guy don't know that you're doing an upgrade or girl um, and they're building something and it causes a problem. So get everyone on board that has admin access or disable the accounts of the other admins temporarily just to make sure nobody else is in this thing. Now it's easier to say you're going to quiesce stuff than to actually do it. Uh, however, in this case, there are some pretty handy tools that exist on the vCloud Director cell that you can use. And they're located in this path uh, opt slash VMware slash vCloud dash director slash bin. So pretty much everything is in op slash VMware slash vCloud dash director. In this case, we're going to the bin directory. So there's pretty much three kind of commands you can run. You can get status on the tasks that are occurring within the cell. You can quiesce the cell, and then you can shut it down as well. Uh, so let's switch on over to the vCloud director cell that I have, and let's do these commands so you can see what they look like. Okay, so rather than use the console of the vCloud director cell, which I have been doing, I'll switch it up and use a tool like PuTTY, which is basically SSH, so that we can get to the console remotely. Uh, this is a little more common than having the consoles pulled open, and I wanted to show you at least how to do it. Uh, so I'm going to launch PuTTY. It's available free on the internet. Um, nothing special there, just Google PuTTY. And I'll put in the name of my cell. It's vcd.glacier.local. And that's all I really have to do is put in the host name. Uh, by default, SSH is checked and it's the right port, which is 22. You'd only need to change those things if it was something non-standard. Click open, 
And there we go, I get a, a login prompt. So I'll log in as root. And then my password, which again, that, that boils down to knowing all the passwords, making sure you have them written down. So now I've logged on. So first thing we need to do is change the directory to that opt VMware vCloud director. So we want to change to opt VMware vCloud director slash bin. Now I could just call this stuff right from the root directory, but I just find it easier in my head. It's easier when I'm in the directory so I can just call things directly. Uh, so if I do a lookup in here, I can see there, here's some various different tools that I can use highlighted in green and I can call them directly from this folder here. So the first one is dot slash cell dash management tool. I'll just tab to complete it. Um, we have user is root, actually user is administrator, sorry. This is the user account for the cell itself. We're not using the, uh, like the Red Hat account at this point. We're using the administrator account for vCloud Director. So my username uh, is administrator, and my password is password one exclamation to meet the complexity requirements. Uh, hopefully yours is more difficult, and make sure no one's staring over your shoulder at this point, seeing what your what your password is. Uh, and then we'll do cell dash dash status, and it takes a little bit of second. Okay, so here's what it's telling me. I've basically asked the vCloud director, "Hey, what jobs do you have going on? What tasks are occurring within vCloud director?" Uh, and it says right now the job count is zero, which is great. That means no one's in there. I mean, it's my lab, obviously. So <laughs> unless someone's hacked into my lab, there wouldn't be any jobs going. But if someone in, in a real environment were uh, executing tasks right now, there would be a number that wasn't, was not zero, basically. Uh, and is active is true. So it's an active server, hasn't been quiesced or shut down. So what we can then pass along is uh, I'm going to hit up to repeat the command. I'm going to backspace and delete that last dash dash status and we'll do dash dash quiesce and then space true. So there, there's no output for that. It just is true because I've now suspended the scheduler that's running by, by passing along that command so that there would be no more active jobs. So at this point, I'm now able to shut down the service on this particular cell. And that command, again, I'm going to put my mouse in here. I'm going to put the up arrow, uh, push the up arrow rather, to repeat the command. I'm just going to delete that last part. There we go. I'm just going to uh, add the word shutdown at the end. In fact, um, I'm going to drag this out just a little bit. There we go. Probably easier to see. Uh, shutdown, and there we go. Execute that command. Again, there's no, there's no output. Uh, it just happens in the background. So now I can go and call. I'm, hit, I'm hitting up arrow a couple times to status. I'll call status again. And you notice the job count hasn't changed, it's still zero, um, but the is active is now false. So this cell is no longer active, it's no longer servicing. Uh, the scheduler is now uh, paused, so to say. It's, it's, been, it's been shut down, I should say. So we know that the cell is now no longer active. Now why is this important? It really boils down to part of the upgrade is upgrading the database. And if we have active jobs or active, you know, active tasks within the environment, that's going to need to talk to the database, uh, which is going to be offline temporarily for an upgrade. Uh, so you can't have that. That would cause, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, bad times, corruptions, things like that would, would occur from having someone trying to write to a database that wasn't available. Uh, so we want to make sure there's no activity so that that doesn't happen. So let me go back to the lesson. Now that we've got everything, job count is zero, active is false, and we'll move right along. Okay, and I'll just remind you here, you'd want to do that uh, potentially for all your cells. Now, there are some kind of tricks to the trade if you had multiple cells with load balancers and things like that. Uh, it basically boils down to if you have one like we have right now, obviously there's no way to stay online during the upgrade. You're just going to have to, you're have to, going to have to take an outage from a management perspective. The VMs will still run. There, there's no issue there, but we can't get to the vCloud director cell because there's only one. Now, if we had two we could potentially point people to one and upgrade the other, and there's there's kind of some fanciness to that. Um, and there's actually a, a whole process written on the VMware website about upgrading that's out of scope of this particular course, but it covers how to upgrade multiple cells when there's a load balancer and things like that. So there are some ways to do this upgrade without having to kick everyone off 
but I tend to go for the more heavy handed, let's make sure no one's in there, let's make sure nothing's happening uh, to make this as flawless as possible. And really having vCloud Director for the brief period of time for the upgrade shouldn't be the end of the world for 99% of the cases uh, that I've run into. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you've quiesced all your cells and there's no more activity and you've kind of kicked everyone out and you're within your maintenance window. So the next piece that needs to be done is the install media needs to be copied over to the cells. Now you can kind of front load this activity, you could copy over the media earlier, uh, but it needs to be here at this point. You're going to start calling it at this point. So what I like to use is a tool called WinSCP. Again, I think I've made this kind of known throughout the course that I'm, I'm a bit more of a Windows guy. I, I know Linux enough to be dangerous. Uh, so I call WinSCP as my tool. It's basically a file copy tool uh, for in integrating between Windows and Linux. We're going to copy the file to wherever we want it to go. I usually have like a prep folder within the vCloud Director cell. And if you want more details on that, go to the lesson where we actually install vCloud Director on Red Hat Linux. It goes over all the install process because we're basically going to repeat that except we're going to execute an upgrade, which is a little different. So if I move over real quick, let me tab on over to WinSCP and I'll show you how to get the file in there. Okay, so here's WinSCP. Again, it's just something you can you can Google WinSCP and download it for free. There's there's no there's no charge, no install, you just run it, and there it is. So in this case, I would connect to my vcd.glacier.local again. And I'd give it that, uh, I'm going to use the root account. You don't have to. You can use whatever has, you know, full admin over the box. My root account and password. And I'm going to change this to SCP. Log in. And it's going to pull up kind of like an old Windows Explorer view uh, of what's going on. So if I go to, um, let's go to the root directory here. I've got this prep folder right here. And this is originally what I used to install the cloud director. And I've left the files here so you can see them. But you would have gone to the VMware website and downloaded uh, the correct version of the upgrade that you're trying to do. So in this case, I've already got vCloud Director 5.1.1 with the latest build on here. There's nothing newer since uh, I think it came out in December of 2012. So I can't actually upgrade to a newer version because it just doesn't exist yet outside of, you know, potentially a beta or something like that. Uh, so I can't execute an upgrade. However, this file would need to be on there. It's VMware vCloud Director, the version, the build.bin. So that file would need to be on there. And that would be something that I've just downloaded off the website and put on my desktop or maybe some shared directory that's that's out and about somewhere. I usually have a, I usually have a copy in my in my desktop or my downloads. So if I go to downloads, I might have a copy in there. Uh, so you would just take, I'll just show you an example. If this were the file, you just take, just drag it over, it makes a little plus sign. It asks you to copy it, you'd hit copy. And then the file would exist over here. So that's step one. Um, let me minimize this. We'll go into the cell and I'll show you step two. Okay, so I've opened back up the, the putty session with SSH. And we'd want to go to uh, change directory to the root slash prep. And I'll look up in here. So here's where the file would be, uh, the VMware vCloud director bin file. We'll just pretend that we're doing an upgrade to 5.1.1, but that would be the file. The next thing you'll want to do is a, a change mod or ch mod. You want to change the security around it, basically. So you'd run ch mod u plus x, and then the name of the file. So in this case, it's VMware vCloud Director 5.1.1. I can kind of tab at this point. Uh, actually, 5.1. I made a mistake there. That's why I tried to tab it, and it wouldn't work. So because I had a dash there or a period, it should be a dash. Now it'll let me select, let's see, I need 5.1.1-8.bin. And there we go, it executed the, the change in the security so that we can execute this file. The X is for execute. By default, you can't execute it because it's just a file that you uh, copied over there. So when you went to do the upgrade, uh, it would not work. So that, that might be, you know, you're trying to call the file and you're wondering, why is this not working? That would be why. So let me switch back to the lesson real quick. Okay, so we've copied the media over uh, using WinSCP, changed the file permissions to allow execution, that's the X, and we have verified again, because uh, we just did it recently, that everything is quiesced and shut down. The next step is to actually run the upgrade. Pretty straightforward. So if I go back into the SSH session, all I'm really doing is uh, dot slash and then that long path again. I'm gonna cheat, I'm just gonna copy it, 
The cool thing about SSH uh, is all I have to do is select it, and it's now copied. I don't have to hit Control C or anything like that. I can now uh, right click. So I'm going to right click right there and just paste it. Uh, alternatively, you could use you know uh, a copy command, but I find that really handy. So just just highlight. Once it's highlighted, then right click and it pastes it. So I'm going to show you in this particular case, it's not going to it's not going to work because I'm already at this version. So it's going to basically just hit enter to run it. If this were a new version, it would say that it's found an upgrade and it's going to perform the upgrade once you hit yes. So here we can see it says warning, the RPMs for vCloud Director are already installed. It's skipping the installation because it did a check and it saw, hey, I already have uh, the vCloud Director uh, RPMs, the packages installed. I don't need to do this again. But if this were an, uh, an upgrade process, it would say, hey, I see there's an upgrade here. Uh, do you want me to go ahead and do the upgrade? And it's really simple. You're going to say yes, and then it's going to pretty much walk you through a couple steps. Very, very simple. Nothing much to do. Uh, however, make sure that you understand this is going to take down the vCloud Director service on this particular cell. And you don't want to restart that service. In fact, let me get back to the lesson. We'll move on. So again, I have the, I have the red warning flag. Don't restart the vCloud service. Wait until the database is upgraded, which is the next step. Because if you try to start the service up, you're going to have a service that's been upgraded to, let's say, you know, 5.x, the new one, but your database will be the old version, and that won't work. Okay, at this point, now that we have one cell upgraded, we do have the ability to do the upgrade of the database because the files that we need will be on that cell. However, comma, make sure the other cells are not using the database. So if you have 10 cells, you know, once you install it on the first one, you'll have the tools to upgrade the database, but you want to make sure the other ones are quiesced and not actively doing anything to the database at the same time. Uh, and again, I point out the vCloud Director, it really can't connect to the database again until it has been upgraded. So once you upgrade a cell and it stops the service, you can't restart it until the database is upgraded. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a dependency of make sure database is upgraded before you start the cell. That also includes restarting the cell. I, I wouldn't want to restart the server right now because when it restarts, it's going to try to connect to the database again. So it's very straightforward to do the database upgrade. You don't have to know any SQL or Oracle. Uh, you don't even have to connect to those servers. Uh, what's going to happen is a folder will be created for you. Again, it's in that very common opt VMware vCloud dash director slash bin slash upgrade path and find a cell that's been upgraded, potentially the one that you're on right now. And uh, basically, you're going to call that upgrade file, dot slash upgrade, basically. And a wizard is going to prompt you to say, hey, I'm going to upgrade the database. Are you okay with that? And you can say yes, or you can say no. Hopefully, you're saying yes. Hopefully, you're ready for it. So at that point, you're going to get a prompt to say, you know, do you want to rebuild your indexes or not? Uh, I almost always, I don't think I've ever said no to rebuilding the indexes. I, I always go ahead and say yes. Um, I don't know the nitty gritty behind it because I am not a DBA, but it is recommended by VMware to upgrade your performance. So it's basically going to reorganize the information that's in your database so that performance can be increased with whatever the net new goodness is with the new version of vCloud Director that's in there. There may be some new rows, some new tables, some new columns, whatever may have you that are introduced with the upgrade. And by rebuilding the indexes, it can all be kind of performance tuned for the, the net new stuff that's in this version. So that's pretty much it for the vCloud director piece or the vCloud piece. Uh, you're going to upgrade those cells and then the database and then you're going to come to this section. So before you do anything else, you'll want to upgrade the vSphere resources. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's the hosts, it's vCenter, it's vShield manager. Those are all the pieces that are kind of not vCloud director specifically, but they're all dependencies. Now, critical, the first thing we want to do is we want to upgrade vCloud Network and Security or vShield Manager. I typically caution before you start restarting up your vCloud environment, go ahead and upgrade your vShield Managers or your vCloud Network and Security Managers first. Uh, and you'll need to upgrade all of the, the different vCNS managers that exist, depending, it really depends on how many vCenters you have. And, and we want this to be upgraded so that when vCloud comes back up, it has the proper version of vShield Manager or vCNS Manager that it's talking to, as well as a proper database to connect to. I feel these are very important pieces because vCloud Director really has a tight relationship with vCNS Manager, uh, and we want to make sure that it's a supported version before we, we bring the system up. Now, there are 
a lot of like 5.1.1 and 5.1.2 of the VCNS are both compatible with the latest version of vCloud Director. So in that case, if we were running the slightly older VCNS manager, we wouldn't necessarily need to upgrade it right away. But if there is a need to upgrade in order to be compatible, you need to upgrade vCNS manager before you start restarting the services or restarting the actual servers for the vCloud Director cells. So I'm going to assume that you're running vCNS uh, version 5.x, which is a pretty safe assumption because it's the only thing really supported with vCloud Director 5.1. Uh, you'll again you'll download the upgrade bundle from the Vi my VMware portal and the upgrade is done directly from the managers web page so let me change on over we'll go into that and I'll show you how to do an upgrade okay so I've got the uh, vShield manager the vCNS manager uh, pulled up for you and all I've done is just gone to the IP of the vShield manager and let me put my password in here I think it, I think I remember it that's good. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I have it all copied down because, you know, like I said, that's important to have all your passwords before you can do this upgrade. Again, it's another thing to look out for. The vShield Manager is another thing you'll need to make sure you have admin access to. Uh, so if you want to get to the place to the upgrade, by default, you're in the wrong spot. That data centers is the default section. But we want to click on Settings and Reports. And then you can probably guess by now, it's the Updates portion right here. It's, it's very straightforward. Uh, so all you have to do is click Upload Upgrade Bundle and then browse to where the file is, um, which I've got a copy here of the OVA. You'd actually have uh, the bundle file, which is typically a bin file or a zip file. You would upload that with a new flavor, new version. Again, I'm running the latest and greatest edition, so I can't actually upgrade this, but you would just browse to it, uh, click Upload File, and then click OK, basically, to execute the upgrade. Uh, you'd be kicked out momentarily, and then when it had when it has finished upgrading and restarting, you're now upgraded. That's really all there is to it. They make it very, very straightforward, no, very simple, no command line stuff you have to deal with. And then you'll, uh, when you get done, basically you can check this to see, all right, what version am I on? So you can see I'm on version 5.1.2, which is the latest. So I can't actually do an upgrade on this, but that's how you can verify your version number and your build number. It's all in this area. At this point, once this has been upgraded to a build that's compatible, with the version of vCloud Director that you've um, basically chosen to upgrade to. At that point, you can go ahead and verify that your database upgrade is, is good to go, verify that your vShield managers are upgraded. At that point, you can go ahead and restart the services on your cells, or typically I like to just give them a restart because they've probably been running for a while anyways. Go ahead and restart either the, server, the cells themselves or the service uh, that's the VMware VCD service on the cells and get those started back up. Uh, so get all those restarted, connect to it, make sure that it works. You'll want to connect in, so you would connect into, in my case, it's vcd.glacier.local slash cloud. Um, I'll continue the website because I have an untrusted cert. And you'll want to see this screen at the very least. Now, I will caution, when you power on uh, the vCloud Director cells, it may take like 10 to 15 minutes at least for this page to be reachable. You'll be able to ping the cell. You'll even be able to see that the service is started, but it just takes a while for the web page to be ready. Uh, and that really depends on how beefy your vCloud Director cells are. You know, if they're if they're quite large and powerful, maybe a little less time. Mine, mine are kind of weak and small uh, for the lab environment, so it takes, you know, me about 15 minutes or so, but it, it, it will take a little bit. Don't freak out when you see that. So let me show you, I'm gonna change back into the console session that I have, the SSH session that I have, and we'll restart the services on that. Okay, so I've switched back over to the uh, SSH console for the vCloud Director cell. And in this case, if I had just finished an upgrade or something like that, I would want to make sure that the service is running. Uh, so the first thing I can do is I, I could pull status again if I just keep clicking up to get back to, um, let me get all the way back to that directory where I've got the bin files here. Uh, I could go ahead and do a the dot cell management tool, username administrator, password, password one with an exclamation, cell, status. I could do that. I can't really start it up though from this point because the, the, the tool really just lets you get status, lets you quiesce, and lets you shut down uh, the, the, the basically the watchdog, but that's not really going to help me here. Um, so. I, I can confirm that the cell is not active, but that's great. I need it to be active. So the command I really want to run is uh, a Linux command. It's service 
space VMware dash VCD space start. And this, in this case, it would normally start both the watchdog and the cell itself uh, to make sure that it's powered on. So you can click start. It's going to first get the watchdog up. And this is basically a wa the watchdog just makes sure that the cell is started and kind of the is kind of the parent of the cell to do care and feeding to make sure it's alive. So it started both the watchdog and the cell, which is great um, because we need both of these active for to basically service requests to the vCloud director cell. So I'll go ahead and run that command. I'm just clicking up to scroll back through the commands that I've run. Uh, so I'm going to run the status one more time, and we should see is active is still false. That's great. Hmm. Let's find out why that's still false. It might just be that we haven't given it enough time. I know it takes a little bit to become active uh, on what I'm doing. It might also be because I have quiesced the cell, which I think is the last thing that I did. Let me go back through my commands here. Yes, I have quiesced it. Let me false that. I've just rolled back and I'm basically running the quiesce command again, which again uh, suspends the scheduler, but this time I'm changing the uh, true for the quiesce to the false to basically not quiesce. So let's get status on this again. Uh, there we go. And now it's true. So that, that could be, I mean, I, I've done that a couple times to myself just because I forget. That could be a, a good, uh, you know, kind of pothole to fall into. Make sure to, if you've quiesced it and you didn't restart the whole cell, uh, like the virtual machine itself, you want to go ahead and uh, quiesce false to get it unquiesced, I guess you could say, or, or active again. Uh, and then you want to make sure those two services are started by doing the service VMware-VCD space start. You can kind of get an idea now why I just like to reboot the cell to make sure that everything comes back up the way it should and, you know, just give it a fresh reboot with new code always kind of makes, makes me get the warm and fuzzies. Uh, but let's go back into the lesson and move right along. All right, so at this point, really, your vCloud environment is upgraded. Um, I'm assuming that, you know, we're in 5.1, so you're running vSphere 5.1. Uh, so the obviously the dependencies are going to change depending on, you know, if you're going to, let's say, 5.2, which doesn't exist yet, or 6. whatever, whatever the new flavor of it is. But it, it's really, what I'm trying to say is it's really going to depend on what the new version of vCenter and the SXI hosts are. Uh, for 5.1, I've got another short URL there where you can look at all of the vSphere 5.1 docs uh, as necessary. So you can pull up any information for 5.1. So if you're going from uh, 5.0 to 5.1, this is going to be, it's going to be a living document because every version is a little different. But essentially, the high level for a vCenter upgrade is you upgrade vCenter, you upgrade the hosts, then you upgrade the hardware version and the tools. Uh, I'm sorry, the tools first, then the hardware version of the virtual machines. So the, the nitty gritty behind that is really what changes because in 5.1, for example, vCenter now has uh, a separate service called the SSO or single sign-on service that uh, has, uh, it's quite interesting in the installation of that. It offers a lot of new choices uh, and who knows what's going to be in the next version. So you'll want to upgrade that infrastructure. Uh, now, if the upgrade that you've done for vCloud is still supported by your old infrastructure, you can power on and move right along right now. If it's not supported, you'll want to make sure to upgrade that as part of the process in your maintenance window. So the final piece is upgrading the vCNS or vShield Edge appliances. Now, these are the kind of, it's called the Edge Gateway within vShield. It's basically, you know, what's handling all those fancy network services within vCloud. And you want to make sure those get upgraded at some point as well. So this is the last piece. I'm going to go ahead and switch back into the lab and show you where that's at so that you can get those upgraded, at least see the process. And at that point, your upgrade is finished. Okay, so I've switched back over to Internet Explorer. And here's, you know, we still have the update for VCNS pulled up. Really, all you have to do is change the view up here to edges. That sounds cool to me. I don't know. I just like edges. Uh, and then if you click edge gateways, you'll see a list of all the edge gateways. And... You can see the name too, which is kind of cool. This is the one I deployed for my developers, uh, Org VDC. And there's there's more here. If I hover over it, it should tell me the long GUID ID uh, that is way too long to show in this column. And then under Actions, there's it's right here. It says Upgrade. And it's grayed out because I can't upgrade uh, because I'm on the latest code. There's no upgrade available. But that's pretty much it. You would click Upgrade. It would go through the process to essentially deploy the Edge device with the latest and greatest code. And it handles all the niceties for you. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about you know, copying over the config of the edge gateway because vCNS and, and sort of vCloud uh, work in conjunction to handle all that for you. So you click the upgrade, let it get to the, the latest and greatest version, and then you're good to go. So wow, l large amount of content on this. I know it's a lot to take in. Really, you can have this lesson around if you're ever doing an upgrade. I always recommend reading the documentation in detail because it's just really important to make sure that you understand all the dependencies and everything that go along with an upgrade. However, this should give you a very good starting point to get your environment upgraded and to give you, I hopefully, some of the pitfalls, some of the issues, you know, even I forgot the quiesce thing. I mean, these things happen, and it gives you a kind of a real-world look at what it's like to do the upgrade. Uh, hopefully, you're successful when you go to do an upgrade. My fingers are crossed for you. I'm giving you thumbs up through the, the, the digital interwebs right now. Uh, hope you enjoy this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.